Hey guys, and welcome back to the second extras vid of Rodea the Sky Soldier, and the very, very last vid of the playthrough as a whole. Today we're going to be checking out the other versions of the game, namely the one on Wii U, and the one on the 3DS. Uh-huh, and they are both absolutely awful. I mean, you can already tell the quality of this game from the, the splash screen for the opening of the game because they play one piece of music that's really loud, and then they repeat it, and then it cuts itself off to start the game. I had to double-check whether my friggin' like, video player was malfunctioning or not. No, that is literally what the game does. Like, I started up, and I was just like, oh my good god. So I thought, I have to leave that in, I, I can't not present that. Uh, I thought they got June Sonoy back for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's fine, I love June, he's great. Alright, right off the bat, what is different about the Wii U version of Rodeo the Sky Soldier? So, the, well, as you can already see, it's visually much more crisp, mm -hmm. but colour-wise it's much darker, much more washed out. They've also done something weird with the subtitles. They're bigger, which is nice, but they're in a really odd positioning, like really very far to the bottom of the screen, especially when there's multiple lines of text. Um. But also, the gameplay is fundamentally different because it is based on the 3DS version. Oh. So, uh, rather than... Oh yes, you also get this. Oh, that's... Mm. So you get that piece of music which is inserted and it's horrible and tinny and awful. And then the anime voiceover, which is just really unnecessary. Wait, that's a thing... Oh well, of course there's also a thing in the Wii U version if it's in the 3DS version. Yeah... And, I mean, already you can see uh, a very fundamental difference in the way the game looks, because the character art is very washed out, and it looks weird to me. It's not actually like that in the 3DS version, they actually use the same character art, it's just a little bit more pixelised to get it all to fit. Uh -huh. But, then also, like, I mean, just look at those textures. Uh -huh. Maybe they should have kept the Vaseline smear kind of thing from the Wii version of the game. Well, I mean, I'm quite glad that this is definitely crisper. I mean, that's one of the main criticisms I do have of the Wii version, that it is very smudgy. Ah. But this just... The, the textures are really ugly. The models are really, really ugly. The gameplay is just really dull and just uh. <laughs> well instead of just saying and making noises do you want to explain how flight works in this game well, I mean I'd say you're probably a, a better person to explain how the flight works in this game because it's the same as the 3ds version that's the one that you have experience with I don't want to do I have to show you where the game touched me uh. <laughs> no it's fine I'll do it God. so you uh, press the A button to get ready to fly, you release it to launch into the air, and then you can sort of target and fly towards stuff, but there is a, a meter that counts down for how long you are able to fly. If you go through gravitons or whatever, then it will maintain and you won't lose any time on your flight, but... Yeah, it's very, very, very easy to get yourself into a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a look through like, the upgrade system uh, in the 3DS and whatnot, and I couldn't seem to find anything that extended the flight meter, you know, something that would allow you to fly for a longer period of time, which puts me in mind of the stamina system from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. You can upgrade everything in that game, and this one too, I guess, except for the thing that lets you go further and faster. Yeah... I mean, the one thing I will say in Skyward Sword's defence for that is that at least the stamina meter, although very helpful, is not necessary for completing the games, and really, when Link's going at normal speed, he goes at the speed that pretty much most other Links have always gone at, so the stamina meter is just a little extra bonus. So it, it's not necessary, but it's good. This is a fundamental mechanic in the game, flight, that is hampered by mechanics. Yeah. It, it just, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what this game is about. 
And I mean, something else that's different in this tutorial is that we get introduced to enemies in this, whereas we didn't until level one. Did we not? No, it, you huh. we didn't find any enemies until the first level of the game. But here, they introduce the enemies. I think it does make sense in terms of the plot. Yeah. It, it just means more talking, and it's just like... And also, stopping the gameplay to talk and being really slow about it. The Wii version sort of did this as well. But... At least, once this tutorial was done, it had the decency to just let you get on with things. Well, in the, the 3DS version, which I may as well talk about here, because we won't be seeing much of it, I can tell you that much. <laughs> uh, it kind of felt like a tutorial that never wanted to end. Yeah. I mean, considering this was the first time that I'd spent any time with the Wii U version, like, just starting up, I was just struck by how slow and sluggish everything felt. Like, even this tutorial, it's just like, just, just shut up. Let, let me go, let, let me finish what I'm doing. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> There's so much goddamn waiting. Yes. And this is a game that doesn't really do well when you're forced to wait. Oh god, the flight speed is so slow. I know, I mean really I could be doing the boost, but considering the boost use up, uses up your flight time, you're potentially going to screw yourself over because flying too quickly just means that you lose it. Although I have noticed that you do hang in the air for quite a while. Sometimes. Which is it's just, it's weird. Another thing you'll have noticed is that there's a health bar, which uh, I'd rather just have the power up function of the, the original version, because that just works better. And you also ha collect items from enemies which allow you to do the whole upgrade thing, which are permanent, but it just doesn't really work, I think, in the context of the game. It makes some bosses a nightmare to take down, especially if you haven't been grinding or collecting items. Yeah, it's because it means that you have to grind, and for this type of arcadey game, that just doesn't work. Grinding is awful in this type of thing. It reminds me, in part, of Transformers Devastation, which had a loot system. Yes. For reasons I couldn't understand, because the base game with its, you know, usual, like, upgrade systems was fine. It didn't need that kind of extraneous stuff. You know, it just seemed like padding at the end. Exactly. I mean, I think probably what would have suited Transformers Devastation a little bit more is probably something akin to what's happening with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan, because having multiple Transformers that you could have controlled at once and could have switched between them to pull off moves, so then you could have the different weapons, but you'd have much more freedom, or, you know, treat it like Bayonetta's switching weapons, which works very well. You just, you don't need all that loot because it dilutes the decency of the weapons because you there's so many, then you're just like, I don't know which one works better. And you just like, you find something that works and then you stick with it. There's no real reason to experiment. So what exactly are we covering in the Wii U version of the game? Not the whole thing in one video, I presume. Oh, of course not. So, uh, we are just covering the prologue and then the first level, because I just wanted to show off exactly how the game works. This is something else that is new for the 3DS and Wii U versions, is that there's these plot crawls to give you a little bit of information that is more ambiguous in the Wii version. Hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about this, because I think you could have done the same thing just with a cutscene. Well, exactly. And also, half of this information isn't really necessary. Like, the game already quite clearly states about the 1000 year time gap, but then also, right there, you just get Princess Cecilia, daughter of Giardo, was distraught over the selfish war of aggression, which completely ruins the surprise of Princess Cecilia being Giardo's daughter that you get at the end of the game. And it's a bit like, Princess Cecilia works better when she's a bit of an enigma. Also, wouldn't have this been better coming before the prologue level? 
Yeah. Because you're already escaping with Cecilia during that. Yeah, so it, it just doesn't really work as an idea at all. And it's it's just very confusing. I mean, obviously you get this wonderful art, which I'm quite happy with. Yeah, it's really nice, actually. Just having this sort of plot crawl, it's just, it's unnecessary. And I think they do it numerous times throughout the game. And it's just like, why? Show sure don't tell, guys. Yeah, exactly. And also, I mean, we're going to get a rather weird cutscene, quick time event thingamajiggy here. Like, this is just randomly inserted. Huh? Yeah. It's like they decided to add in a dream sequence because they couldn't, you know, just have Rodeo wake up in the future. I sort of like this idea. Is it the only time in the game that it's uh, used? I have absolutely no idea because the end of the first level is as far as I played because I was just like, eh, no, this, this is not for me. Well, I'll say, like, if it continues throughout the game and it's used well, I, again, I wouldn't know because I stopped the you know, 3DS <laughs> version about uh, seven or eight chapters in. That's pretty cool. If it's just a one and done sort of thing, uh, kind of misusing a concept, I think. Yeah, also it's just reusing assets for the sake of it. Also, notice stuttering loading screen that's just not... It's waiting to load and then really struggling. It's just like... <laughs> it's got to be all those high-res textures, man. Yeah, also, look at what the hell they've done to this cutscene. It's just... It's really bloomy. I thought that was, like, from Rodeo's point of view for a second, and then it would cut to Ion, but apparently not. Oh, I mean, what they did in the 3DS version is that I think they bloomed everything a lot more and then oh, did Jesus. this sharp cell shading to try and get that sort of cartoony look. <laughs> but they left some of... Even though they got rid of the line, they kind of left half the cutscenes as is. And it just looks... Crap. Yeah, you can see it when it, like, fades in and out. I'm... Yeah. And then, I mean, you look at this and just look I'm... at the washed-out colour palette of Ion and Rodea, and look at the washed-out colour palette of the level, and it looks hideous. I'm sorry for coming across a wee bit more negative than usual, especially for the Rodea playthrough, which uh, I think we, we had our moments of, like, overly being critical, but uh, for the most part it was fairly positive, but this is just jank. Yeah. I mean, I think... I've got a very strong bias against this particular version because of the fundamental mismanagement of the project by Katakawa and then whatever rubbish NIS have done with their localization. Yeah. But if you just put the two games in comparison and compare them, you can see that there is something horrendously wrong with this version of the game. You could see the floating continents in the background when the cutscene was fading out. Yeah, and this is something else. So this is Ion at her Worst. default chattiness. Okay. You can make her less chatty, but you can also make her more chatty. And I mean, I got annoyed with her during this first level, and I didn't in the Wii version. Like, she had a bit of a chat, and that was fine. But she knew when to be quiet for periods of time, whereas this Ion, no! She just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking and stopping your progress and talking and talking. <laughs> she just never shuts the fuck off. It's like, you found an item. That's a good item. Oh, why are you taking so long, Rodea? Better get going, Rodea. Here we go, Rodea. Yeah. It actually puts me in mind of, like, Sonic's pals talking to you during the final boss of, like, uh, the HD version of Sonic Generations. Pretty much. I mean, this is another prime example. So, in the Wii version, you just fly up to the checkpoint, you hit it, Ion speaks this line of dialogue, and you keep going. The Wii U version decides, yes, we need to completely stop gameplay to have a cutscene to tell you about this checkpoint, and then we'll let you continue, but because it stopped you, you're just going to plummet to the floor. Question. Yes? Does the Wii U version of the game run at 60 frames? <laughs> no, it runs at 30. I was gonna say, because that's probably why it looks so much slower. 
Yeah, I mean, I rendered this at 30 because that, that's what it is, but, so, it runs at 30, but also, there are frame drops. I mean, obviously ah! there are, there are, the Wii version's frame rate isn't necessarily always a consistent 60 frames per second. At least it got it, up there. It got up there, it's relatively consistent, and it, it looks and feels great. Unless, you know, you don't like motion controls. <clears throat> Flame. Flame. Yeah. <laughs> but this version of the game just obviously runs slower, it feels slower, and it just really hampers everything. You don't get the joy of flight. Which is kind of the whole point of the game, really. Yeah. God, that bloom, what were they thinking? And I'm not saying that in a fucking, like, AVGN kind of way. I honestly don't get the art choice or direction for this version of the game. I know, I mean, like, say all you want about the bloom in Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD. That's the HD version of Wind Waker, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Wind Waker HD. Say all you want about the bloom in those being a bit too excessive. At least they look right and actually do look good. Whether they are better than Jesus the original Christ. versions in terms of the bloom is a different matter altogether, but they do fundamentally look decent, whereas this type of bloom just looks wrong. And... ugh. Uh, it's kind of like they wanted to like up the resolution, uh, but uh, they also wanted to hide the textures at certain points as well, not all the time just while you're flying through levels. Yeah. I mean, I think pretty much all of the problems this game has, at least the, the Wii U version, would have been solved had they, you know, ported the Wii version. Because you would have had a much more fun game to control, because, I mean, the Wii U can play games with the Wiimote. In fact, quite a few games make a point of saying that you can control it with the Wiimote. I mean, I'd say Pikmin 3 is arguably played what? best with a Wiimote and Nunchuck. Mm -hmm. With the gamepad as a map and being able to make sure you know everything that's going on. So, it's certainly possible to play the game as it was intended on this particular console. To EDS, obviously, it's not possible, so you've got uh, to make allowances. Oh, uh, make it stop. <laughs> but they could have done de something decent with this version of the game. Instead, Kadokawa decided that they si they were not going to use Prope's game. They were going to use the game that they'd worked on because they wanted the money. God, the game just looks so boring now. Yep. Did they just turn Bloom up to 11 or some shit? I know! So th they increased the bloom, they've washed it out, they've done something really... So, with the shadows in the game, they've done this sort of... slashing effect? So you know, like, if you look at shadows in manga uh -huh. and comic books, where it's kind of shaded and scratchy, almost. Mm, yeah. So they've done that on the shadows in the levels, and it just looks weird and wrong. Oh, it's just like two characters, and between them is just endless bloom. I mean, you can probably see some of the... the, the yeah, you can actually see the, the scratchy shadow effect on that platform there. It's just... It doesn't look right. I should mention, this is my first time actually like, seeing proper footage of the Wii U version of the game. I did not check this before we did commentary for it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's a massive disappointment, isn't it? I may end up preferring the 3DS version, if that's even possible. Well, having myself had a look at the 3DS version now, because of having to edit the footage to smush it all together, I'd say the, the, the Wii U version certainly looks better and probably plays better, but it's still awful in comparison to the original. You see right there? He hasn't ruled for 1,000 years. You did not need all of that 1,000 years later, 1,000 years ago in that prologue rule. It was simply unnecessary. Oh, bad next, run away. Like a Pascari at this point. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, this is going to be pretty much the end of the Wii U footage. We are going to have a look at the menu options that are available to us, because obviously this is an extras part, so I wanted to try and show off everything the game had to offer, yada yada yada. But no concept art, really? You're slacking, Richie, you're slacking. I know, well... I wanted a whole part for a day and I on trading cards. <laughs> It's fine if we ever, you know, do No More Heroes 2, then you, you, you will have probably more than you can shake a stick at. Sweet Jesus. CB for complete bollocks. Well, no, C-B-A-S. I got, I got an S rank, thank you. Absolutely shite. <laughs> so, yeah. So once you get out of the first two levels, you are flung into the world map, which is basically just a slightly more in-depth, in massive air quotation marks, version of the level select from the first game. It's just an excuse to put in like a pause so you can upgrade and whatnot. Yeah, and uh, it's just a way of, I suppose, making it look like you're travelling the world, but eh. Rodeo looks very punchable though. Yeah, so you can look at the status of Rodea, like what his stats are, which just is... Uh, Still a robot. Yeah. And then you've got all this talking with upgrading, and it's just like... Mm. So you need to pick up materials to be able to upgrade, you get the materials from beating enemies, Obviously, if you get so far into the game, you're going to start to struggle if you haven't upgraded, which is just, like, why? Yep, yep, that's why I got locked out on the 3DS version. I just could not beat the boss with the amount of health I had. Also, look, that, that first flyability upgrade was to be able to fly in an arc. This is basically doing what Moon's Edge Catalyst seems to have done, at least from what oh, we were shown in the beta, yeah. of... Locking off very important fundamental mechanics in the game, like rolling when you land. Jesus Christ! And that's just like like behind a upgrade tree, and you're just like, how? Why? What is this? Oh, this guy! Fuck off! Yeah, so we have Tonio taking us through the play log, and we're going to have Sonia taking us through the gallery type thing in jiggy mm. and they just keep talking <laughs> so many d's oh a couple of s's though well yes because I've, I've not played much of the game so clearly i haven't been hit once so of course my damage is going to be zero <laughs> i'd love that above us to keep a stat for how much you've like walked distance wise when you're going to be spending most of the game flying i know it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> especially in this version of the game <laughs> yep so, this is something... So, in this version of the game, the Legacy Medals do have a little bit more of a purpose, because you use them to unlock things, rather than just, you know, being optional extras that you can get. So, you can unlock music, you can unlock certain, I think, moves, and various other things. So, I believe... That music, Rodea, is the. Yeah. I believe it's that. Um, you also have these ticket islands, which I think are optional missions. Not 100% sure. Like, there's, there's potential here, but having it locked behind the medals, A, smacks of Sonic Unleashed, B, smacks of doing Sonic Unleashed, but worse. Yeah. And here is the thing where I just thought I have to show off um, that you can change Ion's chattiness. <sighs> like, the fact that that has to be a function is ridiculous. If, if you need to put in a setting which allows you to change how chatty your characters are, they are probably a little bit too chatty at present. Seriously, tone it the fuck down. <laughs> or have default and let it be able to go lower. You don't need to go any higher. And now we're on to the 3DS version of the game. I recorded this. We're going from basically where we left off in uh, the Wii U version of the game. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you can already see, in terms of the character art, this is definitely better. Um... I mean, apart from the jaggies, but then you, you you look at the actual visuals of the game and you're just like... Ooh. I'd like to point out, I played this on my f new 3DS 
XL, you know, with its nice and big screen. Yes. To record it, I had to go back to my default 3DS. <laughs> and, oh God, I never felt so cramped in all my life. <laughs> Mechanics-wise, it's exactly the same as the Wii U version. Uh, you've still got the flight meter and such. But uh, you don't get to use the Wii Remote on this. Oh no, you don't get to use the stylus. Oh no, that would be way too, like, kind of fluid and whatnot. You know, Kid Icarus, it, that got it right. You know, for all my qualms with that game, <laughs> with broken wrists and whatnot, at least you could, like, slide along with the stylus. Oh no, it's all about the friggin' slide pad here. And also, I mean, considering you would have had to play it on an original 3DS, the frame rate is going to be particularly bad, because... It's funny you say that, I don't think it even gets improved on a new 3DS. Well, so, I, I mean, I think it is technically better on the new 3DS, because it's closer to 30. At least it, it is more likely to hit 30. I think if you're dealing with a, a normal 3DS, it's more likely to be sitting around 20. Mm, I think it uh, went down, uh, spiralled, should I say, into Ocarina of Time PAL territory at times. Yeah, which is really, really bad. You guys have already seen the bonus stages, so I'm not even going to bother showing these off. Although, that said, they are different in this version. I don't want to, though. I had a really poor time trying to record them. <laughs> it's fine. You, you only did this because I asked you very nicely. Yeah, between the two of us, I'm the one who can record 3DS games. Yeah, I would love to be able to do that one day, but... Uh... Obviously, that requires quite the financial investment, and it's not really quite worth it for me at present. Basically, what we're trying to say here is go subscribe to X Gamer Richie Returns and watch everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would clearly be wonderful, but um, I, I don't expect that to happen at all. <laughs> As you can see on the, the touch screen over on the right, you actually get the upgrades, uh, you know, like the machine gun and the slide gear permanently, but uh, they feel kind of not all that great to use a Richieism. Yeah. I mean, it does just look really clunky, and also like it could quite possibly break elements of the game, because having the different gears available at any time means that you don't have to necessarily always worry about the enemies as much as you would otherwise, because when the machine gun's limited, you've got to make sure that you try and cling on to it. So you can't just sit back and snipe enemies, you've got to try and get involved, but try and stay clear, and there's a bit of tactics involved, whereas this probably allows you to just sit back and just go, yeah, I'm just going to try and pot shot you all before I go any further, and that just slows down the game even more. Man, boosting through the air should feel fast-paced and energetic, but here it just feels like you're, f like, speeding through treacle. Yeah, which is just not fun. At all. I mean, I'm getting some nice combos here with both the machine gun gear and uh, the boost attack, but it still doesn't really feel exciting. Yeah, I mean, I'd say when I watched this footage for the first time, I thought, you're actually making this game look better than I thought it... it well, this version of the game looks better than I thought it would do. Retakes, my friend, retakes. <laughs> yeah, but it is still really slow, really quite dull. I do... well, something that I should point out is that also on the... Uh, Wii U version, on the gamepad you have that same shot of the ion wave with the ion in it and chatting. You can switch it to just the game view, but that's something that links the 3DS version and the Wii U version. They've got that same bottom screen view, which is, I suppose, nice, but utterly pointless. Ah, uh, it's little old me. Yes. I got it this time. <laughs> I think somebody actually pointed out who voiced Lil Olmi in one of the comments of one of the parts earlier. Like, they heard the voice and thought, ah, I recognise them. I cannot remember which part it was for the life of me. Well, I'll go back and scan. Give me a second. <laughs> but they certainly recognised them, and I just thought, ah, that, that sounds like an actually really good call. It's exactly the same fight with a worse camera. Have fun. 
I'm going to assume he would appear from, like, a piece of heart onwards. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I, I'm frantically searching right now. I think I might have the part. Or not, never mind. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh... We do research, guys! I mean, it's one of the frustrating things of not having the credits really properly. Oh, here it is. Um, so, apparently it is Todd Habercorn. Okay. Who has voiced Kororo of Sergeant Frog Death Jr. in Soul Eater and Italy in Italia. And I've had a listen to some of his other voice roles and this do it does sound quite similar. So, I'd say that's probably a good call. I wonder if he'd admit to it if he, anyone was to ask him if he voiced someone in Rodeo the Sky Soldier. I mean, potentially. I mean, I think quite a lot of voice actors probably do get slightly annoyed when they aren't necessarily credited. I think it's something. Somebody said it was something to do with with small scale productions. They tend to not credit people because of some sort of union rules. But I'm sure voice actors do appreciate it when people recognise them in things in products that they weren't necessarily sure anybody would notice them in. Thankfully, we're going to cut off before we encounter Tonio. I think we're actually going to skip ahead a little bit in the game to show off how boss fights are like handled in the 3DS version. Because obviously, I mean, there was only really one boss fight you could show off, considering you hadn't, you know, beaten Chapter 10. But still, also, just look at that model. <laughs> yeah, I want to call it N64, but N64 would love to have a model that complex. When you say that, I actually think the N64 could do a slightly better, like later N64 could do a be better model than that. Oh, so you're on chapter 5 right now. I mean, just think about Pokemon Stadium. That had far better models than this. I suppose. Obviously, it, it's a very different type of game that's a lot easier to deal with animations because it doesn't have to necessarily be as fluid. And also yeah, but then the fact that that looks which was released in the 1990s looks better than this. Right, this boss is a nightmare and it took me at least five to eight tries in order to get a good take. This is not as easy as it looks, especially when it comes to turning. Oh, and by the way, if you happen to run out of boost power in the air, flight power, shall we say, enjoy the very, very long, very, very, very slow fall down. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a fucking eternity. It, it bloody looks it. And also, the camera just looks absolutely appalling. It's it's pretty shit, honestly. Like, no hyperbole. It's one of the worst cameras I've ever seen in a 3DS game. In fact, this may be the worst 3DS game I have actually played to do. It's... Oh, it just... It's awful. And it's really sad to see this happen to a game that is actually quite good. I mean... I don't think that maybe the viewers have necessarily found it quite as enjoyable as I have done because I mean that was one guy, Richie. Don't get neurotic. I know. I think half the joy of Rodea is in the playing of it. I'm trying, I swear. Well, yeah, but when you're playing something like this, it just—it's not fun. But when you're playing the Wii version, it is fun, and even if that doesn't necessarily come across. In a video, let me, I, you can trust me. It is a better game. It's a decent game. It's not perfect by any means, but it did not deserve this crap. Jesus. <laughs> so, any final parting words before we part ways with this playthrough once and for all? If you get the chance, to play the Wii version. Don't touch the other versions with the barge pole. They are just awful. Yeah, if you're desperate for something like sort of Sega related, just get Sonic Lost World 3DS. Or better yet, just get Generations 3DS and have a fun time boosting through levels. God knows it's got a better camera than this game. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't give a shit about B-Ranks. BS. That's what I think about the fucking 3DS version of the game. 
B S. Oh my god! I'm never, I'm, I, I'm never touching the 3DS version again. It just, <laughs> it scarred me. Okay, guys, I've been Top 64. He's been X Gamer Richie, and this has been the Rodea the Sky Soldier playthrough. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time for another HFC playthrough. Bye bye.